Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for our final nutrition for this uh, academic year. Uh, we're excited to uh, wrap up this programmatic experience as we wrap up this year and learn a little bit more about banana muffins today. I want to acknowledge um, a few of the campus partners um, that are helping to make this happen. Um, so for all of our nutritions, we've been working with basic needs, health education and promotion, housing and residential life to bring you a live food demonstration based on healthy, easy and affordable meals and snacks. My name is Heather Pearson Vieta and I work with our housing and residential life team uh, supporting the campus experience. And for today's nutrition, we are also partnering uh, with our colleagues in the University Police Department in uh, facilitating this activity, which I'll get to in just a moment. Before we get started, we did wanna let you know that this demonstration is recorded uh, so that you may be able to view again as you need. Uh, the recording link will be made available on uh, through the basic needs and housing uh, websites so that you can view them later if you want to come back and revisit some of the tips that are shared about how to do the recipe. I'm going to uh, add some of those links in the chat so you can all visit them um, at your convenience. There's also a lot of great information on those websites, um, resources that may be available to you as, as students and, and other folks with the campus. That being said, oh, and want to check in, um, this is the bag. Uh, if you were able to pick that up this week, that is awesome. Inside, you have some ingredients that our, our host is going to be talking about later today, as well as your recipe card. So if you don't have those um, out right now and you want to take a moment to grab those, definitely do so. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Chief uh, Strode, who's going to be joining us uh, and walking through how to make banana muffins. Thank you all so much. And Chief, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to you. Thank you. So my name is Chief Clint Strode. I'm the chief here at uh, Stanislaus State University Police Department. And thank you guys for welcoming me uh, to help you and, and to uh, do a little bit of cooking with you. Uh, before we get started, I did just want to uh, kind of introduce myself. I started here at the university in 1993 as an incoming freshman. freshman. Uh, I went to school full time for about two years before the university police had a full time position open. And so I jumped into that uh, position and I finished up my bachelor's degree part time. Later, I went on to uh, go back and get my master's degree, uh, which has been um, a wonderful addition and uh, helped me a lot in my career here at Stanislaus State. So before we get started, I did want to kind of talk about uh, cleanliness in the kitchen. Uh, we want to make sure that before we do any sort of cooking that we not only wash our hands, but that we start with a clean workspace. Um, I already did uh, clean off my workspace here and, and uh, sanitized it. But uh, for my criminal justice friends, you'll notice that I'm not wearing my uniform today. Uh, one of the things to consider uh, if you do decide to go into criminal justice is that uh, uniforms could be something that... Uh, collect a lot of different things, whether it be um, human or just environmental contaminants. And so when we cook, uh, we want to make sure that we're not bringing those types of things into our home and into our kitchen. So uh, no uniform today while we cook uh, to make sure that we're being clean. Um, I also started with a, a clean dish rag today so that uh, I could dry my hands and I wouldn't contaminate it with anything um, that might have been used before. All right, so just kind of a quick word about some of the tools that uh, I'm using today. Uh, I do have a kind of array of different bowls here. I've got some tools for mixing and, and scooping, but a lot of these things can be uh, replaced with a fork. I have some measuring tools, some cups. I also have a set of Measuring for uh, teaspoons and tablespoons. And I have my recipe. It's nice to have this in front of you while you're cooking so that you can refer back to it. My ingredients might look a little bit different than yours. Uh, these are ingredients that I had here at the house. Uh, the ingredients that you have in your bag uh, may look a little bit different, but they should all be the same type of ingredients. Um, Bananas, this is banana bread. 
course, are our essential ingredient. And if you guys are smart shoppers, uh, especially for banana bread, sometimes a little older bananas uh, do a little bit better in this type of recipe. And you can find a whole bag for about 99 cents. So this is uh, sometimes a cost-effective way that you can have a good source of uh, vitamins in, in, your, in your diet. So let's get started here. So I'm gonna start with our bananas. So in order to, uh, to do this, uh, our recipe calls for three to four large bananas. Three bananas is about the same as a cup once they're smashed up. So we're going to uh, just peel all of our bananas here. They don't have to be pretty. Bananas are about to have a bad day anyway, so they break, that's not a big deal. There's the banana strings, because no one likes banana strings, right? And this is something that you can do very easily with a fork. That's how I'm going to do it, do it today. Pardon me, I didn't get my fork out ahead of time. But there's my fork. So you can just use your fork to go through and smash your bananas. This is where having some bananas that are, are a little more on the ripe side, maybe bananas that are just a couple days older than you might normally want to eat a banana fresh. It's just about perfect. You can see they kind of start out kind of coarse. We'll kind of work on those for just a minute here. If you guys do have leftover banana, on my experimental dry run last night, I, I mashed up much more banana than I had planned. But I went ahead and I put it in the freezer and uh, it'll work great for smoothies. If you guys uh, are looking for something to add to a smoothie, frozen banana is great for that. So you've got to kind of got it started, kind of soften up here, and you can kind of see it's looking kind of softer. So I'm going to kind of stir it around here. The uh, more that you can kind of get the chunks out, the better. I'm sure that there are people who are much better cooks than I, who have a better way of doing this, but this is my way of doing this. All right, I think we've got that just about right. You guys can kind of see that's pretty, pretty, pretty beat up now, pretty soupy. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. And in my next bowl, I'm going to mix all the dry ingredients. So I'm going to mix the dry ingredients so that I can kind of get them um, uh, mixed together a little bit better. And then I'm going to add the wet ingredients over here, and then we'll add those two together later. So I'm going to start with my, um, and you don't need to add the, ingredient, the dry ingredients in any particular order because it'll be easy to mix those together. But I'm going to add my uh, two and a half cups of all purpose flour first. And this is our flour. Yours might look a little bit different, but I've already pre-measured out my two and a half cups right here. Um, so I'm gonna add my two and a half cups into my, my bowl. I'm also gonna add my one cup of white sugar. Shake there, it level it off. And I need my one cup of brown sugar. A 
There we go. One cup of brown sugar. Now let me see what else do we have here. We have our one uh, teaspoon of baking soda. Teaspoons here. Make sure you use teaspoon, not tablespoon. I've done that before. You'll want to level that off on top. Go. Put that in. We also have one half teaspoon of baking powder. Again, we'll just kind of level that off on top. Sprinkle that around a little bit and mix it up a little bit later. Something to note when you're using um, baking powder in a recipe is the expiration date. If your uh, baking powder is not uh, good, then your, your bread or whatever you're making won't rise properly. And then it'll uh, not turn out correctly. We have uh, one teaspoon of salt. That's my half teaspoon. There's my teaspoon. There we go. And I, I like to kind of set my things that I've already added off to the side so that I can really easily remember what I have and had, haven't added yet. One teaspoon of cinnamon. Make sure that's the cinnamon, not the cumin or something else, because that would be bad. I like cinnamon, so I might just let that be a little more full than one, but anything with cinnamon is good. And that should be all of our dry ingredients. So I'm actually just gonna take my spoon, I'm just going to kind of mix my dry ingredients up. Brown sugar uh, is a little thicker than the rest, so sometimes you got a little clump in there, the brown sugar, although they're pretty easy to break up. There we go. All right. There you go. You can see, you kind of got a nice homogenous mixture there. All right, I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to go back to our, our bananas here. And we're going to add all of our uh, wet ingredients. So I'm going to start out by adding our three eggs. And these beautiful eggs were donated to us today by Lieutenant Sherry Silvera. Lieutenant Silvera has some uh, fine chickens there. I believe these uh, beautiful greenish colored chickens. I believe that's uh, I believe that's uh, Bell the chicken. We'll add Bell's contribution here. Nice brown egg there. I believe that's Mildred chicken. And three eggs. So we have one more. This one looks like it's also a Mildred egg. Thank you, Mildred, for your contribution. And I am going to wash my hands a little bit after handling eggs. Again, we want to make sure that we're being uh, clean as we cook, not potentially spreading anything from our, our tools to our hands and back and forth. Let's 
There we go. So we have our eggs next to our one cup of oil. Set that aside. Our vanilla extract. And that is uh, two teaspoons. Um, Two. Just rinse that. I'm gonna get away from you there. All right, double check here. I've got my eggs, my oil. In the dry, we have the brown sugar, the white sugar. We started with our three to four bananas. Two tablespoons vanilla extract. We already added our flour to the dry mixture. We added the baking soda. We added the salt. We added the one and a half teaspoons baking powder. I'm sorry, one half teaspoon baking powder and the cinnamon. All right, so I'm gonna give this uh, mixture over here with the bananas, a good mix here. Just using my fork, although I do have my my whisk, you don't have a whisk, fork works just as good. We're gonna mix that up nice and thoroughly. Slop a little bit out there. All right, so there we go. Now we kind of have the mix here of the bananas with the eggs and all of the uh, other more liquid. Set our whisk aside here. And we're gonna start slowly just adding the two together. Put a little bit in there. Mix that together. Ah, let's just throw it all in. It's all going to get mixed together anyways, right? There we go. All right. Let's get that all mixed together. Might take a minute here. It'll look a lot better when it's cooked. Kind of get it starting to mix together there. You want to get down to the bottom and go around the edges. Get all the dry material down there. Oh, one important thing that we forgot. When I started, it's a good idea to pre-warm your oven. Um, I, I should have started that already. Uh, we're not gonna watch the whole time while they bake in my oven, uh, but normally you'd wanna start your oven and get it started to about 350 so that when you're done here, you're ready to cook. Um, if you haven't done that already, uh, it'd be a good time to do that now. All right, we got that. There we go. So this is about the consistency that you're looking for. It's thicker than uh, what you would have for like cookie dough, uh, but it's not a fluid either. And here's uh, here's why. So now uh, I'm gonna grab my, my muffin tin. Here's my muffin tin. I am using just some inserts for my muffins. And that way I can grab the muffin out of the tin and 
eat it with eat it as I drive to work in the morning. Um, but I believe uh, you might have other uh, muffin tins. Some don't require an insert. Uh, some of the new rubber ones, you might not have to use one of these, but uh, you might just to keep it clean. That's an option. So what I'm gonna do here is, uh, last night in my experiment, I found that about a quarter of a cup, between a quarter and a third of a cup is about ideal for uh, filling up one of these muffins. So I'm just gonna scoop this right out of there. I'm just gonna let it drip right in. And you don't wanna fill these all the way to the top, because again, uh, you know, I mentioned that You've got some baking powder in there, so it's going to it's going to rise. So you don't want it to rise too much, otherwise it'll spill all out, and you'll have uh, you'll have muffin top all over the place. It might have been a little too full. Just going to fill these up one by one. I'll show you about what those look like. You've got those. This one might be a little full. That one is about perfect. So you're gonna want uh, a little bit of a gap on the top of those. Woo, that's uh, sticky stuff. A little bit more on that one. You overfill them, that's okay. Something wrong with a little muffin top. There we go. All right. So there, we've got those all filled up and uh, they're ready to go in the oven. Except the most important thing, I almost forgot. Let me get a spoon here. Now is the time where you might add any toppings that you'd like to have on here. Um, you know, you could sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar on top. You could sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon sugar. Or you could just do what I do and put a whole spoonful on top because let's face it, this is the best part. There we go. A little generous on that. You might add some walnuts to it. You could add some pecans on top. A lot of people will also like to add some, some chocolate chips. Would be perfect on top. I would need a little bit more. Perfect. All right, there we go. Got our brown sugar on top. That'll cook up all nice and crumbly once it's done. And from here, you're ready for the oven. And when they're all done, it should look like this. Got the brown sugar crumbles on top and everything. I have to say those look really good. And I like the tops of muffins. That is definitely my favorite part. part. Especially adding that, you know, some brown sugar or some chocolate chips on that. That is, that's a great tip. Actually, just one thing to add that I realized I forgot, it, it is on your recipe, um, but I found that about 20 minutes was perfect in my oven. Your oven might be a couple minutes uh, longer or a couple minutes shorter, uh, but 20 minutes worked about right for me. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, and you. that's a great tip, like keeping an eye out on them. Um, every oven has like different temperature settings and so forth, or 350 on one might be <laughs> 340 on another. Uh, but yes, 20 minutes. And then on the recipe card, if you wanted to try this in the form of a loaf, 
in a in a loaf tin. Uh, there's um, some instruction. It's pretty much the same steps, but uh, with a little bit longer time, um, as the bread um, is a little bit denser than it might be in a muffin. So. Thank you so much, Chief Strode, uh, for walking us through the banana muffin uh, recipe and sharing some of the tips along the way. Definitely appreciate the notes too around cleanliness uh, in the kitchen and, and taking that caution and care as we prepare food. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us this uh, lunchtime to um, learn about the banana muffins. We are doing um, a prize giveaway today for um, a muffin tin with the silicone cases. And so I'm adding into the chat our um, winners for this, uh, for today's nutrition. Uh, if you're interested, if you're cooking, um, if you're mixing up alongside with us and, and hopefully in about 20 minutes, uh, if you're interested in sharing a selfie of your muffins with us, we would love to see uh, what you created. Please uh, follow these. Um, I'm adding some instructions into the chat on how you can go ahead and share your selfie with us. Um, if you wanted to post it on social media and tag um, either uh, basic needs, health education promotion, or, or, or San Res Life um, in the post. And if you'd like uh, to be added to the UPD page, uh, you can also tag the UPD and, and we'll add you uh, with your muffins there as well. Oh yes, I love that. That would be fun. Um, and Chief, I'm wondering if you're going to share <laughs> some photos as well too. That would be um, awesome to see. I will, they'll be there. And then um, we have a brief survey that we'd like folks to complete and share your feedback um, about the activity, about the recipe. Um, so if you can take a few minutes, there's just a few questions, uh, complete the survey that's in the chat. We'd love to hear from you um, and your feedback as we continue to work and, and develop out um, healthy, um, you know, affordable uh, different recipes to provide to students uh, this next year. So this is our last nutrition for 2020-2021. Uh, we are hopeful though to keep this series running uh, if you're going to be joining with us, joining us as a student in the fall. Um, and then in the meantime, hope you have the best of luck with your finals and wrapping up the rest of your semester. Uh, please check out um, our website if you're looking for um, past recipes that we've done. If you weren't able to join previous new nutritions, you can check out the uh, link in the chat for the basic needs uh, website for more information. Um, and then, of course, to our, our campus partners for health education promotion, housing, and residential life, and UPD for letting us uh, borrow some of Chief Strode's time today, and apparently Lieutenant Silvera's uh, eggs, which was a, a really nice uh, note. But more information um, and access about our uh, nutrition can be found on the Basic Needs website. Definitely encourage you to check that out. In the meantime, hope everyone has a lovely weekend and good luck finishing up the rest of the semester. Bye.